Hi, I'm Brandi Heflin. I'm a personalized physics instructor, and I help high school and college students feel confident and successful in learning physics. Welcome to my AP Physics exam preparation video series. Over the next few weeks, I'll be releasing a sample free response question from each of the four AP Physics exams to demonstrate the different kinds of questions that will be asked and to help students familiarize themselves with how the AP exam will ask them to show their knowledge. As a tutor working with students all over the country, I know that not every student has the opportunity to work with released exam materials prior to exam day, and this video series is intended primarily to help those students. According to AP Central, students can expect the four following kinds of questions on the AP Physics 2 exam. There will be one question on experimental design, one on qualitative to quantitative translation, one paragraph length response, and one short answer. And the question in this video is type 2, qualitative to quantitative translation. We'll be taking a look at the 2015 exam question number four that dealt with electric field and potential and magnetic fields. The apparatus shown in the figure above consists of two oppositely charged parallel conducting plates, each with an area A equal to 0.25 square meters, separated by a distance D equal to 0.01 meters. Each plate has a hole at its center through which electrons can pass. High velocity electrons produced by an electron source enter the top plate with a speed V0 equals 5.4 times 10 to the 6 meters per second, take 1.4 nanoseconds to travel between the plates, and leave the bottom plate with a speed VF equal to 8.02 times 10 to the 6 meters per second. Part A, which of the plates, top or bottom, is negatively charged? Support your answer with a reference to the direction of the electric field between the plates. Oops, there we go. Uh, the top plate is negatively charged. An electron will be repelled by the negative plate and attracted to the positive plate, so it will feel a force in the opposite direction of the electric field. Since the electron speeds up, moving from top to bottom, it's feeling a force downward, which means the electric field points upward. And the electric field between plates points from the positive plate toward the negative plate, so the top plate must be negative. And for scoring, um, there was a point for relating the direction of the force or acceleration to the direction of the field, and then another point for relating the direction of the electric field to the sign of the charge on the top plate. Part B, calculate the magnitude of the electric field between the plates. So a quick note for you here is that there are um, two solutions, and I'm only going to show you one. We have one that involves um, forces and kinematics, and um, the other finish writing. And then the other involves um, conservation of energy. And I'm going to show you only the one with forces and kinematics. Okay. So, electric field. Oops, I have lost. There we go. I lost track visually of my cursor. So the electric field uh, is defined as the ratio of force to charge. And in this case, since we are dealing with um, an electron, our amount of charge will be the elementary charge, lowercase e. So now we can use the um, kinematics information um, with the change in velocity and the time interval to figure out the force. So our next step will be to say that um, this force will be equal to the mass of the particle times its acceleration. So we'll take the mass of the electron multiplied by the change in velocity and divide by the time interval. 
and that's going to give us 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31st kilograms for the mass of the electron times 8.02 times 10 to the sixth, which is the final velocity of the electron, minus the initial velocity of the electron, 5.4 times 10 to the sixth. And that was all over 1.49 nanoseconds, which is, of course, 1.49 times 10 to the negative ninth, um, which gives us a force value of 1.602 times 10 to the negative 15th newtons. And now we can come back to um, this calculation of electric field as force divided by charge. So we'll take our 1.602 times 10 to the negative 15th newtons and divide it by the elementary charge, 1.6 times uh, 10 to the negative 19th coulombs. And we will get a value of the electric field. Um, I got 10,012 newtons per coulomb. The scoring guideline calls it 10,000. Um, scoring guideline, I'm going to abbreviate that SG. All right, so scoring for this part, we're going to have a point for an appropriate relationship. Uh, appropriate kinematic relationship to determine the acceleration of the electrons between the plates. We are going to have another point um, for using Newton's second law. Which I abbreviate N2L for using Newton's second law to determine an expression. Magnitude of the force needed to give the electron the calculated acceleration. Uh, and then, let's see, yep, and then we're going to have um, one more point for um, setting uh, the charge times the field strength equals the force calculated from Newton's second law. So give me just a moment. I lost my cursor again. There we go. Okay, so basically, we're going to have a point from this bit right here. <laughs> um, So setting charge times field equal to uh, the force calculated from new second law. And then our last point is for correctly manipulating the equations.
uh, to solve for the magnitude. of the electric field and arriving at uh, the correct numeric answer with units. Feels like it has taken me longer to talk about and write out the scoring than it did to actually answer the question. All right, so that takes care of our uh, four points for that. And if you opted to use conservation of energy, which you can see in the scoring guidelines on AP Central, then they have four points um, awarded for that process as well. And give me just a moment to switch pages so I can answer part C. So part C is calculate the magnitude of the charge on each plate. So hey, hey, you hopefully remember that um, the electric field between a pair of oppositely charged parallel plates is equal to the charge on the plate divided by epsilon naught times A, the area of the plate. So we can say then um, that our charge will be equal to, let me make that a little bit clearer that it's an equal sign, equals epsilon naught A E. So we will plug in our values, epsilon naught is a constant of 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12th. Our area of the plates was 0 0.25 square meters and using the 10,012 newtons per coulomb that I just found, uh, I get a charge of 2.2 times 10 to the negative eighth coulombs. And if you use the round uh, 10,000 newtons per coulomb, you get the same thing, uh, you know, 2.2, either one of them, it was 2.2 with some other decimal places that were small enough to round to just 2.2. And so our single point here for part C, uh, we have um, one point for the correct substitution. of values into the equation. To calculate the magnitude of the charge on each parallel plate. Part D, the electrons leave the bottom plate and enter the region inside the dashed box shown below, which contains a uniform magnetic field B that is perpendicular to the page the electrons leave the magnetic field at point X. And note that our figure here is not drawn to scale. D, part one. On the figure below, sketch the path of the electrons from the bottom plate to point X. Explain why the path has the shape that you sketched. So our path is going to look like this, curving down to the right from uh, the point where the electron emerges from the plate to point X. And because the electron enters the magnetic field perpendicular to its velocity, B and VF will always be perpendicular. So the magnetic force will always be perpendicular to V final as well, which results in a circular path. And for scoring, we had two points. 
The first is for drawing a reasonably circular path from the point where the electron leaves the bottom plate to point X. Note that the diagram on the actual exam was a little bit more square than what I reproduced here. And also note, there's no penalty for starting the path at the tip of the arrow. Then our second point is for explaining that the field is always perpendicular to the electron's velocity. So the force is always perpendicular to the velocity, which creates a curved or circular path. Part two, indicate whether the magnetic field is directed into the page or out of the page. Briefly explain your reasoning. So a little bit of a pro tip here. I recommend that when you are asked to explain your reasoning or explain your choice, justify your answer, etc. Do that part first and then make your indication of whatever it is they're asking you to do second. And that's because you can't make your decision, in this case about whether the magnetic field is into or out of the page, before you've thought your way through the process and the briefly explain your choice is your opportunity to write out your thinking. So, in order for the electron to reach point X, the magnetic field must exert a centripetal force on the electron toward the top right corner of the dashed box. A negative charge feels a magnetic force in the opposite direction of a positive charge, so a positive charge needs a force to the left. The right-hand rule has a force to the left on a positive charge when the magnetic field B is out of the page. And our scoring, we get a point for using the right-hand rule and reasoning that the force on a negatively charged object is in the opposite direction from the force on a positively charged object to conclude that the direction of the magnetic field is out of the page. And note that no points are awarded for identifying that the direction of the magnetic field is out of the page without explaining why. And also note that credit can be earned for a correct analysis at any individual point on the curved path. I hope you have found this explanation of a multi-topic um, short answer question with qualitative to quantitative analysis or a translation for AP Physics 2 helpful. If you have a video solution request that you'd like to see on my YouTube channel, you can send it to physicsproblemrequests at gmail.com. If you need some email assistance, you can send your problem and the work you've done on it so far to freephysicshelpline at gmail.com with a limit of 10 questions per academic year. To learn more about my online physics tutoring services, you can email me at brandyhefflinphysics at gmail.com. You can visit my website at virtualphysicsofficehours.com, or you can find me on Facebook. I'm Physics Tutor Brandy. So just a few notes. AP is a registered trademark of the College Board. The College Board does not endorse or recognize this video or my services. All of the materials presented are available on AP Central at the link shown here for the AP Physics 2 exam, and those materials include the release free response questions, the scoring guidelines, and sample student responses and commentary. I strongly encourage students to review those sample responses to get a feel for the different levels and quality of the responses prepared by the students who took these released exams live and to see what the scorers for that year were looking for and how they decided to award points. I'm physics tutor Brandy. I love physics and I love helping you. Until next time.